Good morning. Good morning, survivors of narcissistic and abusive personalities. I hope you're having a good week so far. Today we're going to talk about tools for navigating abusive and manipulative people. But first, did you know that abusers choose their targets and that they select them based on some criteria? Um, did you also know that abusers choose their targets for their strengths and not their weaknesses? If you'd like to learn more about this, this coming Monday evening, I'm teaching our SNAP Class 2, Targets of Abuse. It's online only. You can attend from home. You can attend with your microphone muted. You can attend with the camera off and have complete anonymity and privacy and watch from home. That's this coming Monday night and I put the link in the uh, notes to the video so you can use that to find the class and to sign up if you're interested. But on to tools for navigating abusive and manipulative people. So some of us think that using strategic thinking um, is like being fake or that we're adopting some of their uh, traits and that that's bad but sometimes you have to fight fire with fire and if someone that you're dealing with is not um, receptive to uh, being genuine and emotionally connected and seeking a shared understanding that means that they're usually operating from a place of strategy which means unfortunately you're gonna have to adopt some strategy too um, and just go ahead and know that that is okay because um, you're not choosing to do this. In other words, you didn't choose to be here um, having to do these things, but here we are. And so therefore we're in a position where we need to start being more strategic. So a few tools. I'm sure a lot of you have already heard of gray rock and no contact. I'm just going to real quick go through this for you. No contact is exactly what it sounds like. No contact at all. You don't respond to the person ever in any way, shape, or form. You don't um, interact with them on social media. You don't, uh, also you cut, cut ties with people who have connections with them who will not respect your boundaries. Um, and so they got to go too. So no contact is what is required ultimately, especially if you've become addicted to the relationship and to the person. So if you have a trauma bond with this person, um, you're going to need to be no contact. And if you cannot be no contact because you share children or because it's your parent and you're still a kid and live at home, um, if it's your teacher or your boss, I mean, sometimes we don't have a choice. Um, and when we don't have a choice, we use gray rock. Gray rock means benign and neutral interactions. We don't rise to the occasion and take the bait and enter into conflict. You just sort of agree and go along with um, and be benign and neutral. Um, my mom taught me to use this with bullies at school when I was young. And so she already knew about gray rock. She didn't know what it was. Um, but basically, you don't take the bait and you don't let them get you upset. And, um, and so sometimes with gray rock, we might have to kind of be a little fake, right? And you have to sort of be like, okay, so let's say for example, um, you know, somebody saying to you, an abusive person is saying to you, you're so difficult, you want everything to be perfect and there's nothing I can do to make you happy. You expect so much from me and you know people aren't perfect. It's like, hmm. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't realize that I looked at things that way, but thanks for pointing it out. You know, maybe I'll talk to my therapist about that. Anyhow, how was your day? So you sort of just roll with it. You know, you're going to use some uh, mental Aikido, you know, it just, or, or Judo. You know, you take it and you don't let it sink in, but you're going to take that energy and send it back their way in this sort of neutral and benign way. Um, Another thing we need to do is beware of flying monkeys. Okay, so flying monkeys are people who are loyal beyond logic to abusive and manipulative people. Um, they can be family members or friends or coworkers, and they might approach you almost like someone that cares about the situation and they just wanted to let you know that they are sorry how things have been going um, for you. 
um, and you know, so they might they might approach you almost like that uh, they're on your side, or that they're just you know upset by the whole thing, um, and that they're there for you. But the problem with that is that they also are going to fly right back to the abusive person and report. So they become the eyes and the ears of the abuser. Um, if you think about how dominating and controlling some personalities can be, um, there are certain types of other personalities that are more like dependent type personalities, and they, they enjoy the power via proximity. And so they will um, nestle up next to the person because that somehow makes them safe. Um, and so you see that a lot in families where there's one sibling that gets beat up on by a parent all the time and the other siblings don't step in to rescue. Um, or they, they'll pile on with the parent against the one family member uh, because it, they know that if they step out of line, then they're next. So it's a power dynamic. Um, so just beware of flying monkeys and it's good to sort of keep your cards close to your chest. and. Um, you know, try not to be as open and vulnerable with people who you have not like vetted um, and that you, you, you're not really positive or know for sure if they are on your, in, in your circle. Um, next, talking about putting on your business pants. So when I say put on your business pants, what I mean by that is that most interactions that we um, encounter in our day-to-day -day lives do not require emotion. I mean, we just walk around as empathic survivors of abuse and um, we're still operating from that place of empathy, vulnerability, being genuine, wanting to make connections with people. And so we sort of walk around with our heart on our sleeve a lot of the time. Um, and it doesn't serve us. And and it really does leave us vulnerable to manipulation, giving away information that people don't need. Um, we're just getting hurt. And so if you're in a situation where it doesn't require um, emotional involvement, we don't necessarily have to be walking around that way. But if you can learn to put your business pants on, so at your job, Right, I would hope that, especially if you work with customers or clients, you have to be a professional version of yourself at work. You have to be a professional version of yourself with your boss, with your coworkers, supervisors, managers. Um, and so that professional self that you have is another version of you. And it's completely acceptable there, right? Because you're at work, you're supposed to be that way. But did you know you can also be that version of yourself in other areas of your life? When you go to your kid's school and talk to their teachers, um, when you're setting a boundary with someone, you can put your business pants on, meaning that this is, this is an exchange of information only. I'm delivering information to you verbally. I'm letting you know I won't be able to attend. Um, it really sounds fun, but thank you. I won't be able to make it. Um, and that didn't require me opening up my heart and soul to this person, right? So just remember, put your business pants on. It's okay to not be emotionally vulnerable in every interaction you enter into. Um, something else that's really interesting, uh, oh, oh yeah, so, so your business pants, okay, business pants, sorry, I skipped something, um, is, a, is an example of a symbolic preservation of vulnerable self. I'll say it again, symbolic preservation of your vulnerable self. And so when I say symbolic, I mean you do something in your mind to switch gears. And you can use symbolism, you can use mantras, um, so one thing that I suggest people to do is like, okay, so this ring, this ring represents my emotional vulnerable self. When I'm wearing this, I am my, my true, genuine, vulnerable self. Um, but I'm leaving that in the car. I'm putting it, leaving it in the car. So now for this interaction I'm about to um, enter into, I have left my emotional vulnerable self in the car. Um, another way that you can um, sort of come up with symbolism or, or things that you can picture in your mind to shift gears is you can imagine that the other person is an emotional toddler, literally and figuratively, because they are emotional toddlers. But, you know, if, if a toddler drops their ice cream cone, do you get down on the ground and like roll around and pitch a fit with them? 
No, you don't, right? I want another ice cream cone. I dropped my ice cream cone. Oh, I'm so sorry you dropped your ice cream cone. That's terrible. Oh, man, I hate it when that happens. No, we can't go back and get you another ice cream cone. I'm so sorry. But maybe later this week we will, right? So you handle an emotional toddler in a way that you are being warm and you're seeing what their emotions are and you acknowledge their emotions but you're also not bringing yourself to the level of an emotional toddler okay so picture that and that's for the symbolic preservation of your vulnerable self um, next you need to learn how to recognize induced communication so a most uh, um, abusive and manipulative people when you're trying to do gray rock or when you're trying to be no contact, they're going to induce communication in a number of different ways. And a lot of times what they'll do is um, they'll come up with some news that they're sharing with you that's something bad about a family member. So I, I know we're not speaking, but you know, I just wanted to let you know that my grandma's in the hospital and I'm having a hard time. You know, that's induced communication. You've already set the boundary. We're not talking. I don't want you to contact me at all. Um, and so they're going to make an emotional plea uh, to get you to respond. They're also going to do things like, for example, um, they're going to drop some like vague information so that you seek some like, what do you mean by that? Like, clarify. Um, they're going to uh, do some sort of like a thing where they're issuing like a, a health scare of some sort like um, I just got back from the doctor and the tests came back and I'm really not okay right now because of what I learned so you're like oh, okay so it it sort of sets you up that if you don't respond you can be accused of being cold-hearted aloof um, you know you're you're an ice queen now because you don't care right um, another one they can do is if you have plans that involve something important you will have already gone over the plan multiple times in writing in the same text <laughs> strand or whatever they call it and they could easily just go back and read previous texts to answer the question right um, but instead they put it back in your lap and it makes you feel like if you don't answer that the plan is going to be screwed up and that that affects you. So it's like you don't have a choice. Um, and all of those things are in, is induced communication. Um, something else you can do is fortify your bubble and protect your bubble. And what I mean by bubble is that you need a space somewhere that's yours. It could be a closet. It could be a bathroom. It could be your car. Um, it doesn't have to be... Uh, a room in the house as we know when you're living with an abuser they control everything so I get it if you don't don't actually have a space but you got to get creative and make one it could be a shelf okay where you have it's just your stuff so it's just a space that is yours only and in that space you're gonna make it something that um, means something to you or provides some peace of mind or provides an environment that you enjoy. Um, so say for example, at my house I have my own room and it's pink and I have my TV with my Chromecast so I can watch whatever I want. I got snacks. Um, I have a heated blanket so I can have the AC cranked up plus the heated blanket. I got my special pillows for my old lady neck that hurts all the time. And, and it's my space. And that's where I can go to have peace no matter what's going on in my life. That is a good place for me and that I feel like I'm recharging and resetting. If you don't have a room you can go to, go to your car and clean your car out, make it smell nice, and, and download some very nice like spa music onto your phone that you can play in your car. Um, and so make your car a nice place for you that you enjoy being if possible. And then, you know, over time your bubble becomes your new life and your new lifestyle. And, and you don't want chaos, drama, upheaval, and dysfunction in your bubble, right? As you're really working hard to carve out this new life for yourself in recovery from abuse, we become a lot more careful about who we let enter into the bubble. So you start to build that bubble with just the smallest, tiniest space, 
um, and then bigger and bigger and bigger until it's what you're hanging on the walls of your new apartment or it's um, the new bedding that you bought for yourself for your comfortable bed. And in order to protect that space, you have to be um, you have to be just careful about the the things that you let in. And it could be a responsibility that you've agreed to. It doesn't have to be a person. It could be, oh yeah, I'll watch your dog on Wednesdays for you. Okay, that's really nice of you to do that, but is that going to disturb your bubble or is it gonna enhance your bubble? Will you like having the dog or does the dog bark and poop and pee all over the place and it's gonna cause stress? You know, so protect your bubble from anyone, everything, um, including responsibilities that you might take on for yourself. So, those are a few tools for navigation. I actually have a lot longer list, but I don't want to make too long of a video, so we'll do a few of these sprinkled around from time to time. Next week, we're going to have Ashley Kilgore back, and we're going to talk about the five love languages of the narcissist. So that should be really interesting. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next week. And now we're ending.